Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing great. I put the Genesis back in here. So, uh, this thing's pretty nasty again. I mean, them Leviathans got down, but just not nearly as violent as the old uh, Genesis. I really like my Genesis. So far, they're my favorite sub that I've had in here. Uh, but anyway, guys, <clears throat> I guess today we can talk about the old subsonic filter. But then again, I'm probably going to title this video something to do with subsonic. So you probably already knew that. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, subsonic filter. You know, do they help you or hurt you? Both. You know, a lot of you guys that just have like a, a ported box in the back of your SUV or car or whatever, especially if you bought a prefabbed or whatever, that subsonic can help you a lot. If you set it right, and I'm pretty sure you need like an SMD tool to actually set it. I don't know. Because uh, a lot of times they're never right. Uh, you know, you got a dial and then they just print something on the side of the amp plate there. And uh, you're hoping that uh, wherever you turn it to is going to be right, which it never is. Uh, but I know Steve Me does make a tool. Like a tone generate thing. I don't know. I mean, it works, I guess. Uh, probably be kind of nice to have one for that instance, though. But anyway, what a subsonic does is, you know, you have a low-pass filter. A subsonic is your high-pass filter. And, you know, that low-pass, say you set that thing at 60 hertz, bloop, bloop, you know. Then, theoretically, anything over 60 hertz, it should filter out. Well, the old subsonic works same way. Like, if you set it at 25 hertz, anything under 25 hertz won't go through. So, if you were set at 25 and 50, in theory, you'd only play like 26 hertz to 50 hertz. Now, that is how it's supposed to work. And for those of you that, you know, have a regular ported box tune kind of high, you know, you might start losing cone control and, you know, flopping around back there. Say it... 25 hertz or under so you could go in there and set that old subsonic at like 25 and you should be safe playing your music that has some low tones that say would dip down to 20 that is how it's supposed to work and that would be great for you guys i mean if you can you know get it set properly where you need to you'll be great and that that's what it actually does so now, the people that it hurts, <laughs> I I tried to play 10 hertz in here, guys. And, uh, I mean, it played 10, but it was really, really weak. It seems to pick up a lot at 13. <clears throat> uh, my subsonics on my amplifiers, I got them turned all the way down. You can't turn them off. So all you can do is set them to the lowest point and then on my amps is 10 hertz. Now that is where it hurts me at. <clears throat> because it seems like 10, 11, and, and kind of 12, the tones are really, really cut out. And uh, that would be my subsonic filter cutting them frequencies down a lot. Like it, it's trying to filter them out. Now, guys that have, you know, like big systems that are tuned really low that want to play low, that's where a subsonic filter can hurt you because most of them, everyone I've seen, 10 is the lowest. Uh, this thing plays like 15 really good, 14 really good, uh, 17, it loves 17 hertz, but 13 starts picking up a little bit. <gasps> But everything under that, I think my subsonic, you know, it's like they ballpark it at 10. Uh, you know, I was, I was just doing testing to see how far down I could go. And it really seems like the lowest in here that I really want to play is 14. Because it seems like everything under 14 is getting cut. 
No, I did talk to DJ Ruskles, and he said that a lot of head units, uh, they cut around 10 also. Like, literally, the, they're just, when they make a head unit, why filter uh, above 10, you know, or under 10? Why filter there? Because there's only going to be a handful of people in the world that are actually wanting to play, you know, 10 and under. So, that's something to think about. Uh, I don't know. I mean... I was telling Ruskers one day that it seemed like, you know, my subsonic just 10 hertz was kind of, you know, it was killing me in that ballpark. And that's when he told me about uh, the head units also. So I, I really trust what he said because that dude's had some really loud builds. And by him doing music, you know, it goes hand in hand. But that's where subsonics kind of hurt some of us guys. Uh, and they help a lot of guys, a lot of people, you know. So if you're wanting to learn about amp settings, and I've seen this question a lot in a lot of these Facebook groups, like, hey, uh, what does Subsonic do or where, where should it be set to? Another thing that I'm going to mention is I have had so many people message me and like, hey, can you send me a picture of where your amps are adjusted to? Really? And that ain't going to help you at all. Every system is different. Like, honestly, I could take another Jeep Cherokee, build it the exact same way as this one, same enclosure, same equipment, and I guarantee you the amp settings are going to be different. <clears throat> you can't really ask people for a picture of their amp settings. We probably don't even have the same amps, but even if we did, uh, you know, everything is different. It's like you could have bass turned up one click on your head unit versus me, and we're going to wind up setting gains different. Uh, anything will cause that, you know. That's why I really urge people to learn how to uh, do all this stuff, you know, if, if you're going to be into the bass head scene. Learn how to adjust your gains. Uh, learn about your subsonic filter, your low pass filter. Bass boost. I just wish they made amps that didn't have that crap on there because nobody uses it. Why would you? I mean, most bass boost is like 40, 45, 50 hertz range. That's where it's wanting to boost. Who plays that high? Really? That's mid bass, guys. <clears throat> or almost. Uh, I, honestly, I think mid bass comes in around 50 hertz. So you're right there on the, the verge of it. Uh and I, I can say that because the mids, my DS18 Pro Audio Neos, the frequency response on them starts at 50, guys. So it's kind of, you know, you're getting up there in frequency. But bass boost, I mean, why? I don't even understand the idiot that developed it and why he would put it on an amp and why all companies seem to follow suit with it. Are they just like, we can add bass boost to this amp and charge 50 more dollars? Is that what they're thinking? Because everybody I know turns it off. I mean, we got it all the way down. Like, nope, ain't using that crap. Uh, I don't get it. But, you know, learn learn how to set your stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of amplifiers, the subsonic is labeled as high pass. Uh, I know this to be true with tar amps. You know, so, like I said, it is a uh, subsonic and high-pass filter. They do the same thing. And on a lot of amplifiers like tar amps, uh, if you're playing that thing uh, full range, you can use the uh, the subsonic or the, uh, the full, the, the high-pass, the subsonic, whatever, if you use it full range. You can actually use that to... Uh, run it for mids i mean a lot of people don't use the built-in crossovers and amplifiers uh to do that like a lot of people use dsp or the head unit i've been asked why i don't use my dsp to run my subwoofers uh i use that dsp strictly for my mids and highs i like the just subwoofer control on my kenwood exelon and I, I like keeping it isolated. I don't know why. I just do. But I keep it isolated strictly from there. I will say on my amplifier, like my low-pass filter is turned all the way up. 
pretty much all knobs to the left, except for my low pass filter, I turn all the way up on the amplifier. Any amp I ran in here, I have. So whatever the highest hertz is, that's where I adjust it to. And I use my head unit for like all crossover point. And the only other knob that I really turn up at all on an amplifier is I, you know, adjust the gain up. And depending upon where, what volume I have my head unit at, and if I have like the subwoofer level on plus one, plus two, whatever, you know, you might just barely, barely touch up the old gain knob, or you might have to give it a couple good little turns, you know? Well, not a couple turns, but, you know, we're talking like, shh, yay far, boop, like that. Or, well, from your view, it'd be like, boop. But anyway, that's going to be this video, guys. I just want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I said every amplifier is different. And you're taking kind of a gamble on where to adjust the old uh, subsonic app. But that's what it does. Uh, I don't think turn it up helps you at all. Jacob Viral said that he, you know, turned his up some and it got a little louder. I don't know. That's between you and Jacob Viral. I just know for me, it kind of it hurts me being all the way down because it won't turn down no lower. I'd, I'd like to really do a full tilt 10 hertz in here to see what it'll do, but I can't. You know, I know 13's pretty good, 14's pretty good. 13's starting to pick up. 14, we're picked up. But anyway, guys, that's today's video. Thank y'all for watching this. Get down there, leave me a comment. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to me. And that'd be cool. I need more subscribers. I need more viewers. I need help, guys. But anyway, man, y'all have a great day, everybody. Peace out and as always, base on.